Hello again and welcome back to Yosemite Valley Zoo today with the second episode of three of our grizzly project and we are going to build finally the main habitat for the grizzly bear in Yosemite Valley. Now for those of you who have eagle eyes you will know that I sneakily changed the title from uh, two episodes to three episodes. The main reason is uh, it just took me way too long and um, I'm gonna explain why exactly and we will have another real-time part at the end as always you guys are used to it and we are going to look at it um, from different angles to see how it works again but before we do so I wanted to quickly give a hook um, for those of you who haven't seen my newest uh, movie habitat build is online it is the Jumanji uh, an original 1995 version and um, I am I am just incredibly happy uh, how you guys seem to appreciate that. It uh, really blew me away by how many comments and how much feedback I, I earned in the, in the first couple of minutes, I should say. Um, but I wanted to, to take this example also quickly to, um, to talk with you guys about YouTube. Now, it's super weird. I, uh, I really felt lately that YouTube is um, getting a lot better for me because I... I forgot about looking at any numbers and stuff. I, I just learned this and after a few talks also with that lady and you know other people, just like I think it's really important to just kind of avoid this and just enjoy yourself, which I completely did with the Jumanji Habitat. I like I loved it. It was like more than four weeks of time total. Like I made a lot of breaks in between and I, I tried to, you know, uh, keep the momentum by just also throwing in some some forced breaks, even though I wanted to make uh, some more content or some more uh, stuff in, in the habitat, um, I forced myself to do something else to, you know, keep my brain fresh and, you know, keep some ideas um, in the back of my head uh, to bring them in later. And so I think this is why I am uh, fully um, uh, kind of convinced that this is my by far best movie habitat I did. So like there is no reason um, and no single evidence why the other ones should be better. This one is by far the best one. I love it. It's just there's everything in there. I think it's uh, also showing kind of my my progress in the game and in the way of using pieces and you know all this kind of shit that you do know you know that over time it happens. But um, one thing that, you know, I, I have no idea when this video is going live, this will be tomorrow. So as of now, um, the video is online for like seven hours around. And um, the first two hours now, like, you know, I, I, I just love to be very transparent with you guys. Like the first two hours and 50 minutes of the of the um, the, uh, no, the movie Habitat, um, the, the video had 2.6 thousand views and approximately 112 comments and about 380 likes it has been shared 12 times on twitch and i've got the numbers in front of me so it's not like out of my head here um and it has been uh, upvoted over 100 times on reddit and also it has been liked over 30 times in two different facebook groups and i got like over 300 likes combined on instagram so far on it and this is insane because comparing these numbers, this was like, I think it's my second best video after the first uh, nearly three hours in three months or something. I think the last video that was so good or that was working so good was the Black Panther one from the South American DLC. So, you know, one could say I was super happy. But as of now, since seven hours are gone, I was just checking the video right before the video um, recording over here and it had 2.8 thousand views. That means during four further hours, the video only gained 200 views, which it gained in the first eight minutes. Um, and there was no comment for the last two hours, I guess, on the video. And I really don't exactly know how and why YouTube treats me like that. So the, the, the part about this is that it has been happening to me lately quite often. Like it was really often that my videos turned out to be working really well in the first like two or three hours. And then as if someone would kind of, you know, just unplug the video and hide it from everyone else, it's just vanished. It's super uncommon, it's super weird. And the reason why I'm talking about that is not because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm complaining or whatever, not at all. It's just like 
I, I, I couldn't care less at this moment in time because I really enjoy this stuff now. I'm super happy. I couldn't, you know, I, I could do videos every day, like 10 of them, because I'm just so much enjoying it. But if there's anyone out of uh, out there, someone of you who knows what that is and what could cause it, because I don't see this happening for anyone else. It just seems to be me. And I have no idea. Is there anything like... Is there anything I do in particular wrong, or is there like a? Because I can really, um, if I remember, I will I will show you some screenshots in the next uh, couple of days on my channel, um, how how the how this uh, graph works. And as I understand the algorithm, the more interaction there is, the better it is get getting pushed and put into the you know the sub feeds and stuff like that of people, and the better it works. But you know, it's it's very weird because I I am really confused by by how much a video can be slowed down after a certain time it's like how how is this working if a video gains so much traction in the first like two hours or three hours and then surely it should be good for youtube because it's making money and it's making making views and people seem to be happy the like ratio is like a hundred percent so it kind of fulfills everything that youtube t tells you to do you know uh, for those of you who are interested, normally YouTube says, okay, so Google in general, the main goal about YouTube is give the people the best answer for their question. They like uh, Google approached the internet by people having questions and problems and the best solution to their problems or question is getting the best um the best publication so to say so that means it, it doesn't necessarily not give you the best in terms of uh, how many people are behind that or how many subs or whatever you have um it is a bit more like fair i wouldn't call it fair but it's a bit more um different uh, difficult than that so youtube and google and the algorithm looks at how many people f at a given time with the given interest and research have seen a certain thing and seem to be satisfied with this offered solution and the more people seem to be satisfied in the eyes of the google or youtube algorithm the more this content will be pushed and i'm talking about content because this can also be like a search request or like a forum or stuff like that and this is also why also as a company you cannot just come up with like for example adidas you know if adidas is there and just like hey let's let's kind of do do like a gym app or whatever um or like a gym website it's like they cannot just come and because it's adidas it's going to be the best one in the world they do have to work for it they have to make sure that also the people um do find what they are looking for otherwise youtube would pull them down i mean sure you can do stuff with ads and stuff but you know at the end of the day it doesn't really deliver on what youtube wants you to deliver now that all being said I'm even more confused because when I do this for clients and with their accounts, I never have the experience that it does hit a wall like this at all. And also I haven't had the issue in the past as well. Like, you know, e either my video was doing good or was doing bad, but it was constant, it was the same. And whenever the algorithm triggered, it continued to trigger and it didn't stop. But like the last, let's say three or four weeks, I, I did, um, observed that quite a lot more often that a video was doing super well in the first two hours and then just completely crashed against the wall and it never recovers no, no matter what you do it's just like from this moment it seems to be disappeared from youtube's um algorithm or whatever so if there's anyone out there and maybe i have just kind of i don't know overseen a recent addition to youtube or whatever um that would be surely helpful and i could adjust this because like I, you know, normally sometimes I'm asking for comments and stuff, you know, people, people are need to interact and, you know, but you guys do like, there is no point in not doing it. Like over a hundred comments after the first uh, one and a half hours, holy crap, that's more than you can ever dream of, you know, just talk to people who just begin with YouTube. They're happy when they're like having 10 comments, you know, after a week. And I'm talking about like a hundred comments after one and a half, two hours, which is insane. It's incredible. You, you, I, I couldn't wish for more. And still sometimes this weird stuff happens. And yeah, it's just like, I, I, you know, you can really get this from my talking. It drives me nuts. I want to understand this. Like it's, it's my inner drive. I want to freaking understand what is going on there and why things happen this way. But anyways, let's, let's stop this topic. I talked way too long about this. Let's talk about what is happening in the background. I'm, I'm sure you guys are interested. Now, first of all, and this is why I need to jump in here. 
well, some of you mentioned in uh, the comments, actually, funny story, yes, what a segue, um, mentioned last time it would be cool if the roof of this education building or the, or the, the, the main building would be uh, connected to the actual landscape and that the kind of grass and, you know, uh, the mountain would just kind of carve into the building, into the roof. And uh, so, yeah, that's what I realized here. Yeah, I just, I think it really looked exactly the way you guys were commenting it and i think it really looks exactly the way you was hoping for or you were hoping for i even left this a little bit of an open space there to get some light in through the headlights and uh, yeah all of a sudden i just tried to make it as clean as possible and one thing i wanted to mention as well i changed a little bit of the idea here with the building it's not the education building anymore this is just the habitat and we will have another education building to the right hand side which won't be happening in this episode this is the main reason why i split it it just like there is so much i did and so much detail i put in again that i i think it was just way too much for one episode and you can see from the length of the episode that it is already quite long so there was no reason to to go further because the next one will be pretty filled indeed there is so much more i need to do i will do some shops i will do some information kiosk i will do a little bit of an actual information building like with an education building i will still need to make the tower and yeah you will see this in the real time part a lot better um because this is where i can show you actually in in real time so that people who don't get dizzy because I, I just recently noticed which i think is really cool to notice that those people who you know don't really like the time lapses so much because they you know they they are they are don't they, they just don't like the sped up thing because it makes them dizzy and uh, it's just not good for them um, but they still tune in because they know that at the end of the video there's always like a real time part and uh, for those people I really want to keep that in and you know even though it does make the episode a little bit longer um, I think it's really worth it and it really does um, yeah it, it kind of um, makes a way um, or kind of makes up for the um, not included cinematics because I recently have to say that cinematics in this game are a lot more hard than in Planet Coaster like you if you want to do some cinematics, you want the animals to be in the right position and you want the light to be correct and stuff like that. You know, you, you have to kind of set up the theme as if it is in a movie. You know, my my level of quality recently, hopefully you guys noticed that as well, got up a lot more and I want to maintain this and I don't want to, you know, just give you some cheap, ugly looking, whatever, jaggery, um, time lapse um, episodes and including some really bad cinematics that's not kind of the stuff i want to do anymore that means um well not saying i did this in the past but sometimes they were just like a little bit rushed um at times and i don't want to do this again and so the the real-time part really gives me the opportunity to show it everything to you a bit more in detail a bit more nice rather than having the cinematics all in my way now with that being said i think in Planet Coaster it was so much more easy because you also could define when the coaster train comes in and it was so much more easy to just hit the test button, just needed to wait until the coaster passed exactly at this point where you wanted to have it, just change the time of day, I mean you, you sure can do this in here as well but yeah. Uh, so yeah, there are a lot of things that were just a little bit more easy and you were not like, you know, relying on the animal to be, <laughs> to be searching for the exact same spot and uh, yeah, just, just hoping that it does find the right angle to rotate and doesn't do any any weird moonwalking or floating for those people who like gorillas i don't know if you do <laughs> whatever but yeah so one of the last things i did here a bit more detail is this education thing down here because honestly if the people are uh, approaching to this area they don't really see um the grizzly habitat and because they will be in this lower down area over here for sure and that means they need to get the kind of little glimpse of what is going to be up when they go up the stairs because usually you know you have to have a you have to have kind of a goal to get somewhere or to you know a reason to get there and the reason was mainly that there is the grizzly bear habitat and you know i was even making two tiny grizzlies over here like just like not really grizzlies but like <laughs> it was just like some some little icons here I, I don't know if that makes sense but you know just so you have an idea of where you're going where you're heading and just putting some pots down trying to make to lo this look a bit more nice but it's not yet done i just put some fences down and this is the stage of the build where i kind of still try to figure out what the overall composition is looking like and then in the end i will definitely go in and make like a lot more detail make it all flow a bit better make it all a bit more finished and you know kind of seamless because at the moment it almost looks a bit 
uh, disconnected and you will see this in a bit in the real time part a lot better because that is uh, always I think it's really fair to to have this in every video because it does give you such a better idea of what you've done here I think again even though this game is, is totally great but there's one big difference and maybe you agree or you don't please let me know in the comments down below if you do agree or not but I think this game is a lot harder to present through a video or through aesthetic screenshots because the reason is that by default you're using so much more foliage and so much more um, stuff just to make it look natural and, and overgrown and whatever that it's really hard to figure what exactly you do. There's so much going on on the screen, you're looking for the animals mostly, but it's not like that you have like a clean skyline of your steel coaster, you know? It's it's not like that you... Oh my gosh, my, my voice is just breaking away. I don't know what that was, feeling like a 16-year-old again. Um, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's really not that easy, okay? So it's not like super easy to understand what's going on. So this game is a lot more hard to capture. And yeah, I was suffering from that in the past. And I think the real-time part really kind of uh, neglects that little uh, difference in here. But yeah, that's it. We are already at the end of uh, the time-lapse. And I really hope you did enjoy it. Now let's jump uh, over into the real-time part and have a look how it actually looks in the game. So, there you go, in the real-time part. Now, this is the oval area, as I said. Um, I, just, I kind of, I don't know why I said this muffled like this, but I, it almost sounded like the overall area, but I think this is the area, how it looks. Um, yeah, you can see this is the little uh, sunken habitat for the grizzly bears, where they can go into their outside area. You can see this big chubby guy over here. Oh, well, no, it's going back again. Uh, to the woman, I don't know. Um, yeah, so the, the main idea, to just get you in quickly, was to really make sure that this is not popping out. I wanted to make sure that this all very, um, very nice little valley down here with the jaguars is still in focus, okay? So that we still do have this area where the jaguars are living and you really can focus yourself on that. You should not be disturbed by anything else left hand side. But then as you approach this area, you can, you can really have this more open look to the area now. Like, I think I succeeded by changing the terraform. I mean, this is like a huge win for the overall area. It doesn't feel so so cramped anymore. It doesn't feel so narrow and so heavy, so to say. You really, you know, it opens up. Look at that. You can even look into the sky here. But obviously, you have to move up a little bit. I didn't want you to be completely, you know, overwhelmed by what is going on here. I really wanted to make sure that this area again looks a bit more separated from the main area. So what you do is you just go up the staircase and even then it does not completely open up to you. I decided to go for the sloped um, design over here to make it really a bit more natural as if this was really put into the mountain face over here and not like you know completely flattened out and bulldozed i didn't want to do this and then you can already see the building to the right hand side and then you can also decide to go around and only if you go around it opens up to you and you see this wonderful habitat in the middle here which i think is really beautiful i think it really does um deliver on what you want to have and this is kind of a sunken nice habitat where people can stand around have a peek in here and obviously you can even see the animals go into their uh, cave in the back and if you want to see what's going on in the cave you can just go all the way around can even have some peeks back again into the sunken area you can even see them if they're hidden down below this thing um, and then over here we have this wonderful big open glass front uh, where if they're in here you can have a peek in or you stand here and see them down there but just like you know you could also peek them or see them from below here but it's not like entirely finished by the way in the inside um, but you can also go that way over here to the left hand side and just go into this build and just wonderfully look inside the habitat you can look at this there can you even just catch someone already sleeping there and on the other hand side, you can see the tunnel. Now, what is this tunnel doing here, right? So this is the main question. Why do we have the tunnel and what is up with this one now? So the idea is that this tunnel is leading into the actual sanctuary by this side or this side over here is meant to be the actual habitat that the guest can see. I'm like, I almost see this like um, as, a, as a switch 
tunnel where animals can be brought into the habitat and uh, can be left out. So maybe sometimes, you know, the animals that are in the zoo cannot be reintroduced in the wild because of several reasons. Sometimes they have a disease, sometimes they have some kind of injury and whatever. But to recover, they could live in this habitat and then they move to the next station, which then is the reintroduction habitat. And then there is obviously the far back in the far back there is the open wild where they're reintroduced. Now, my idea now is to create a bigger building than I was planning over here as the education building. This is going to be the education building. I can really tell that this needs another episode. So this is going to be the education building and then there will be I think mainly like I, I think I draw the line kind of over here. So this entire area will be the more or less middle program, um, which is, you know, a program where the guests cannot see the animals. They have more or less um, they are left alone and they have some some privacy. Well, not some they have like huge privacy so they can develop. OK, and then once they get some uh, babies or, you know, offspring, then this offspring, once they are grown up in this area solely and never have been put back into the habitat, they can be left alone and just left free into the wild. This is the idea behind this. So we get this sanctuary as a kind of uh, middle area between, as I said, the normal guest habitat and the open wild and then we are going to build like a huge gate but in terms of the game i'm planning to make this gate like just custom and left this open or leave it open so that we can have let's say like i don't know maybe we put like 20 bears in here and um, they can roam around free so it kind of translates the idea i'm not even sure if that makes sense if you have a better idea please let me know in the comments down below as always it does really help out uh, for me to get the ideas and yeah this building over here will also be very interesting i guess and then this this wall can vanish as well and you know it just the idea about this building is to put some staff facilities in in the lower area have some shops and info kiosks then have like a second level where there is like a, a viewing platform with like one side glass and then boom you go and this is kind of the the open wild there is a big wooden gate going on here and then and in the wild there's just nature and foliage so next episode this entire thing will be filled and potentially I do some rock work over here to finish that up. But I think overall I'm I'm fairly happy with how this turned out. I'm also like um, planning to put all the foliage up here to make this a lot more swooping, a lot more nice looking with some, some overgrown foliage so that, you know, um, the mountain below gets less of an attention um, so that the rock face over here can really be the star of the show. But we will have to see this. And then over here I'm not really entirely sure how I do it. But I, I, I'm going to see it and find a solution and we are going to make like some kind of Yosemite Falls down here so that we have some some huge water fountain going down and yeah I think this is uh, mainly what I can talk about this episode I really do hope you guys enjoyed it and just to put it in a relation uh, how much I built already look at look at the look at the domes and how much space they took and look at look at this area and I put the same amount of detail in here so you can really tell why this today needed to be like a separate episode and uh, yeah so I really hope you uh, did enjoy today's episode I really hope to see you in the next one and until then just a little friendly reminder if you haven't seen the Jumanji movie habitat we talked about earlier make sure to um, yeah to to enjoy and uh, watch that as well so until then have a good night or good day or good morning, whatever is time for you, and goodbye.